Okay, so I'm continuing with still more digital inking, but beginning to kind of gain more confidence with it as I'm getting introduced and practicing with these brush settings. And what I really like doing are the organic shapes and lines, like for the face, for the hair, for the nose that I'm doing now. What I like doing less is the really sharp mechanical kind of lines. And remember, I can still change the, the width of my brush whenever I want. I'm keeping it between 7 and 15. So for the little top of the eye, which is basically a shadow for the eye right here, but I wanted to leave a little bit of daylight there in case that coloring was interesting instead of just letting it be all black. I'm going to make that a little bit thinner. I'm going to make the creases under the eyes just a little bit thinner. Maybe connect them all the way. And the intention with this shape was that this all gets pretty dark and the star shape, which is more mechanical, so I have to do in different steps, kind of shines like an eye out of the shadow underneath that skull mask. I just thought that would be neat. And of course, I'm not using a vector star shape. It's not going to be a perfect star. I want it to look hand-drawn even though I've gotten a little bit more stable with my ink brush now. This will have more personality and life to it than just a vector star plopped in. Not too much. So as the digital inking continues, you can always check your progress just by turning off your sketch layer and seeing what the lines on their own look like. They're pretty clean. They're at the right resolution. And it's coming across. I'm inspired by tattoos for this image. And this does feel a lot like you know, just doing the initial line art on a tattoo with the tattooing gun, the inking gun. You have to be kind of slow and methodical. But sometimes you, you go a little fast and you overrun it, and then you have to correct. And the, um, the tattoo artists I know, I know a handful of them. And whereas in the 90s, when they would do their flash art designs, the designs for the tattoos they'd offer clients, they would do them in watercolor and ink on paper. Now I think all of them that I know do them digitally. And that allows them to, to have to kind of effortlessly try different color versions. 
And of course, they all have websites now and you can choose their flash art from their websites. And there's a lot of reasons to do your spot illustrations digitally. It's not better, but it does allow for more versatility. And in the business of art, especially when it gets to kind of offering options to clients, whether it's graphic design or tattoos, being able to offer versatile options and not having to rework everything whenever you want to use a different option saves you time and money and resources. It's just a smart decision. Okay, so I did one side of the mustache. I was never quite happy with how I drew that side of the mustache. So this might be something where I kind of digitally ink it. Or just to remind you, compositing skills, I'm digitally inking just as a raster layer, right? So I could always just duplicate, flip, just like compositing our creature, rotate, Maybe stretch a little bit because it's further away, a little bit smaller. And I can composite in the other side of the mustache so it really matches. And then I'm going to select both of those layers and merge them together with Command E. as the shortcut. All right. And then I'm going to continue. I'm going to thicken the bottom of it a little bit. Not that way. Man, it just doesn't want to let me go where I want to go. Let's see. There we go, that's better. So just thicken it a little bit there because I want to transition to a thicker brush. Let's go to 12. For the bottom of the beard here. Whenever I want it thicker, I can always ink it twice and vary my line width that way, even though I don't have a stylus. I think I can go a little thicker. Let's try full 15. <laughs> That's a little too much. That's so why you kind of want to find your range and then stick with it. So otherwise you end up just working against yourself a lot. So I did 12. I think that was working. And if I want it thicker in some places, I can always double ink. Let's see how we're doing record wise. Seem to have lost my recording controls. I'm gonna see what's going on with this. Okay. Now for these little divots under his nose, I might go a little thinner. But never so thin. So the thinnest I want to go is about seven, right? So I'll just do an eight.
And unfortunately, I just changed the brush size on the eraser instead of my paintbrush. But even though little mistakes like that happen, we're trying to limit the tools to just the eraser and the paintbrush. And you can use smooth on both of them as an option. So in this way, we can get as much finished control and variation as we would from using a stylus. But a stylus can save us some time when each mark can be pressure sensitive, as opposed to here having to shape it. First by inking over and then by erasing out. It just depends how picky you are about your shapes. All right, let's go a little thicker on the brush. I'm trusting the computer a little bit more as I build now, so I can go a little bit faster. And then file, save every once in a while. Or command S to update the file. And now I'm getting into more full bleed areas. that in my sketch look like they're black, but instead of filling them with black like I did the syringe, I will just outline them and I'll, I'll make that an option for when I am color. Because what I might want is actually like a really dark blue instead of black. These long sweeping curves, it can be nice just to do them all at once fix anything after the fact. I'm definitely trying to contain shapes. So always overlapping like a coloring book. Not that that makes the best illustrations, but it will make it really easy to see how digital coloring operates. I don't love that one. Let's try it from this angle. Better. Yeah, it really matters which direction you do it. That's true with the stylus as well as the trackpad. Sometimes going from bottom to top works better, sometimes from top to bottom. And it's a gift to be able to do multiple tries here. It's like Japanese calligraphers will practice over and over again just on the same forms. With Command Z, we can practice as many times as we want until we get the line right. Time is our our only limiting factor. <laughs> 